my low carb sweeties it's that time again dr slim presents a little savory feast and it's a little more special so die hard low carb folks appreciate that now i've created a bread and we are trying a pizza and all in under five carbohydrates per 100 gram and of course with some calories as you can see a whole battery of flowers is built up which we unfortunately need um, because you have to invest uh, because it's a completely new completely new way of baking we also need uh, gluten above all so gluten is not so bad as its reputation some people who have celiac disease or gluten intolerance they don't get it so well but all the other everyone else it's just a protein and we need it to bind and glue and to loosen uh, the dough I've already tried a lot. I'm yes, I've been for a long uh, low carb fan. I've tried a lot, and it doesn't work without gluten. In I tell you something. We make a uh, we're making a small fitness bread with a crust. Uh, everything you get uh, no protein uh, you get 10 years ago you you were almost not able to get it now you you have the choice uh, he I brought you some um, two with me and it is here uh, I show you from Aldi a uh, protein toast uh, uh, well they are quite tasty uh, but have 515 carbohydrates per hundred gram and yes uh, you have to be careful also already one slice is almost too much and the bread we make uh, will only have five carbohydrates per hundred gram then we'll make a pizza uh, a delicious pizza with the help of uh, yeast and also our for our bread we make a nice bruschetta quark topping curd topping well that's great let us dig into it and let's see what we need in ingredients so very only roughly well uh, we need some uh, real flour for the yeast to start then take some flaxseed meal uh, we take almond flour with the lupine flour we take the gluten then uh, we take a little of uh, yeast extract, some baking powder, some soda extract, uh, uh, bread spices and salt and for later we need some um, tomatoes and basil and a mozzarella for our nice pizza. Now look at that my little Mm, sweeties will make ourselves it's very simple I've already measured the respective amounts here I link it down to you the on to the gram of course because we will have to be very precise and I'm making uh, four times the amount here <coughs> so I'm making very small rolls or loaves of bread that's enough so we shouldn't eat too much of it because it has a lot of calories but no carbohydrates and then we make one we put a little curd in the other and the other just with water and um, the second portion here is for a nice pizza dough I still have the uh, <laughs> little drum set here they are different uh, flowers gluten lupine you just have to get them uh, I found them here at the El Carp shop here um, for a long time I'm very satisfied there of course but there are different brands uh, but you have to invest a little bit but it, it's uh, you, worth it we need a pre-dough we can also let it rest overnight um, and um, we put a whole cube of yeast in a container uh, well just uh, crumble it a little bit uh, we make uh, two loaf of bread and therefore we we give 20 grams of real uh, flour because um, the yeast uh, needs a starter a breeding ground this is where your alcoholic fermentation starts and that creates uh, carbon dioxide and alcohol and that helps our dough and makes the rising 
we fill that up with a small portion of water, um, steer the whole thing. Please don't add any salt. The yeast doesn't like salt. It's uh, like a chia butter pre dough, of course, with a lot of less flour. And when it's mixed, we leave it for a couple of hours or even overnight. Le uh, um, yeah, you know, I've already prepared something. So here are two of these little doughs, uh, gelled, uh, rye risen a little bit, and then I take them as a starter help. But first, um, first uh, we make uh, our basic mixture. This is now for my active bread. I use uh, gluten. Uh, the exact measurements are linked below. This is the lupine flour. A bit yellowish, but it's not as dry as almond flour. That's why I use that. Uh, then I've got here flaxseed flour. I have uh, sunflower seeds. I have some of the sourdough powder. Um, that of course makes it very aromatic and tasty. Then I still add dry yeast to we just need as much as possible rising here. Then I have a bread spice, uh, fennel and uh, anise and we add salt of course. Guideline 2 grams of salt per 100 gram or 20 grams per kilo. All it goes in. And this this is my uh, basic mixture and that is uh, now four portions of bread and um, I always take something away and then I have a la minute uh, a ready bread mix uh, that I can bake. We do the same with our pizza dough now. <laughs> We have almond flour and also the lupine flour again. Then I've got the gluten here <coughs> and uh, uh, this is a mass here that is over, always all me immediately ready to process. Uh, I can already put everything in. I have a bit of uh, yeast extract. Um, in that case, I had uh, the olive oil and from our pre dough with the yeast. So, wonderfully. And from this here, I weighed two portions of uh, 100 gram each and uh, then uh, we mix it in the machine with a little water about the same amount of water as dry matter my slow carb mice is it's time i made the dough here the one and i added uh, some curd and less liquid and with my active bread here i have uh, only um, water almost the same amount without curd and here we have our nice pizza dough uh, which we now net in the machine so that the gluten can set uh, virtuously and uh, then pack it into molds, flour it a bit and then let it rise. Then it goes into the nice hot oven. Oh, I'm looking forward to that because my boss and friend is coming around. She didn't eat pizza for a long time. So I'm gonna surprise her with this. Okay, let's get started. Um, let the machine work for at least uh, eight minutes uh, until the gluten protein has formed. And now that the machine do its work, look, this is the moment when the gluten just did its work. Isn't that wonderful? A nice um, elastic dough. That's uh, what makes uh, the gluten out. 
No, look at that. Here's the pizza. Then I take a touch of flour like this. And like a classic dough, it's hard to believe you can roll it out. Oh, if you experience, you can also do it in the air. <laughs> I do not trust myself 100%, so we want to unfold the dough here <laughs> on the table. Let's put it on a sheet of metal um, with a baking um, paper uh, foil under it. It's now close the hole here. And uh, look, I still have my permanent baking foil. That's the word underneath. We'll let that rest so that the dough can rise nicely. Remember to heat uh, the oven up uh, so that we can put the breads in there afterwards, like to 210 degrees. Now we have uh, the active bread here. It's a bit moister, but the moisture goes away. Yes, then in the oven, it evaporates, so to say. Then here too, I put a little bit of flour, uh, so to say, coat it a little bit and uh, pack it into the mold here and uh, uh, let it rest and rise. I do the same with the other. Uh, there are leftovers from the flour. That's almost enough for me. Only, only grams. When there's some flour outside, then we've also a nice browning on the outside, which you can't do with our substitutes. Oh, my sugar sweeties. So we have our doughs. Uh, this is the one with the curd. This is the one without, only water. Here's uh, the nice pizza. They let it rise, we let it rise a bit and then it goes into the oven for the pizza only briefly because you finish it again every in a minute. And of course we let the bread bake through. What we're going to do right now is the topping preparing for the pizza and we'll make a small bruschetta curd to smear on the bread. It should taste good. <laughs> oh, alla pizza Italia, buona pizza. What do we have here? We've got the nice mozzarella here. I've already made it a bit smaller here. Then we'll take fresh basil with uh, tomato sauce uh, that I season a bit with, uh, with the famous oregano blossoms. You can also take normal oregano. Then I add a good dash of olive oil, then uh, some tomato paste, ah, um, oh, that's Italian, then some fresh grounded pepper, and a little bit of salt. That's uh, almost all for our pizza, Margarita. And uh, we prepared everything, then we'll do a quick uh, curd dip. Um, I have uh, here 40% uh, uh, fat uh, curd, like the normal one. Let's put uh, 150 grams in a small bowl. Or oh, you know what, uh, just put everything inside. Uh, we, what we do with the leftovers? Uh, uh, now that's about 180 grams. Uh, but uh, that's really a thumbs up story. It always tastes good. Then I have a guacamole mixture here, some uh, dried herbs. You can use a Greek or Italian mixture. Just add a bit of uh, spice. Uh, of course, the Oro di Parma uh, tomato paste um, with spice vegetables. That makes a good taste. Then I've got some maggi and soy sauce here. And uh, we have uh, admittedly a bit older tomatoes, uh, girls, but that doesn't, that, that doesn't matter. We just cut them into slices and then put them in our uh, cream curd. We go, can also de-skin them, uh, but sweeties, we want to do it quickly and the difference isn't that big. Oh, now almost uh, mince them very finely. If they're just like this, uh, just put it inside the bowl. Probably not all of them. Let's see. 
Steer it a little bit here. Mmm. Mmm. It looks wonderful. Oh, you know what? Uh, all in with the tomatoes. It's a wonderful feast. Yes, steer it a little bit. Look, voila, the dip is ready. Our pizza topping thing is ready. Then um, uh, we put uh, our bread in the oven and then it can be crunched afterwards. My lovely ones, it's time again. I caught my bosom friend with a lasso and our homemade bread is out of the oven. That smells wonderful. A little bit of flaxseed, a little bit of almond. Really great. Also put these other breads here that you can buy. But there's a difference. Again, clearly 15 carbohydrates per 100 grams and here five. Oh, so, and now our pizza, our bella pizza. Let's cover it briefly. And I've um, already pre-baked it because it's, I um, feel it's somehow romantic to do that and clever. And we'll cover it with our tomato sauce, uh, which is make a classic pizza margarita here. Uh, let's look at that. That's low carbon pizza. <laughs> I didn't do it by myself for a long time, but uh, this recipe always works. I invented it. Uh, it will be delicious. Now put some of uh, the grated mozzarella on it. Mm, lovely. And uh, some of the basil. Oh, Italian is so easy and wonderful. So beautiful, simple with their food and the sea. Lovely. Totalmente. We'll do some uh, parmesan uh, on top. Uh, that might be a good idea. Oh, that's a little 15 grams. It only looks that way because it's so fine grated. And now it goes into the oven. Oh, and the stein. Now, uh, we look what the brat do oh let's see it, it smells so lovely wonderful still fresh out of the oven warm now i'll cut the whole thing i'm excited oh it's uh, easy to cut look uh -huh. Look, that's great. And such a great crust. Yes, that's really tasty. Now, we, we just... I've extra prepared something. Maybe you've already seen it. I bought the whole range of vegan or vegetarian spreads and cold cuts. Also, one that isn't uh, vegetarian. And there's this great uh, curd that um, we've already pre to prepared here for you again. Uh, and we will also taste it. And what else do we have? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, oh, I've already prepared something that will blow your mind. Well, look, <laughs> look. Here a little basket and then I think of another look I found real biscuits here in the basement for Christmas isn't it a dream <coughs> but you uh, can't eat it anymore for two reasons shelf life and diet but we will at Christmas or before autumn we'll with, do something without sugar and without flour without normal flour we will also prepare biscuits Oh, that's an art, uh, but it works and they taste just as great. But now here, look, we have the vegetarian um, liver spread here. Then I have a vegan salami. Then I have a salmon substitute because it tastes sensationally and only 100 uh, calories per 100 gram. 
and so only two or three carbohydrates. These vegetarian or vegan alternatives, they have much less fat in it as normal, uh, normal sausages, and we do something good for the environment and the climate and the animals. And now that it tastes so great, but I would actually say only for special brands. You're going to see it now and have to taste it. Uh, start um, with uh, this little one here. Now we've got this lovely uh, slice of bread for you. Uh, so try as you like it. How do you like it? Well, now in quick succession, uh, let's try it. Mm. This bread it tastes like normal bread with a lovely crunchy crust. You can you can't get it in stores, you know. Uh, you can buy um, such low carb breads, but they have no crusts and they have a lot more carbohydrates than this one here. It tastes super. Mm, I try uh, this uh, salami. Oh, this is lovely too. So oh, let's just try this one. Mm. How do you like this one? Mm, this is a real one. <laughs> this is a real sausage. <laughs> I made fun of you. With the difference is hardly noticeable. So, my dears, uh, uh, we are still feasting here. Um, the salmon is, is lovely. We are just feasting here and enjoying this bread. Look at it, it is sensational. And uh, it's cheaper than if you buy it and you can make it yourself fresh from the oven. Oh, lovely. Look at it, fresh from the oven. Uh, the original classic pizza. Yes, it's yellowish, but that's because of the lupine flower. But other than that, it's like the original. Don't you think? Oh, look at it, even with the crust. Oh, good that we've got napkins here. Just put it on the hand on the napkin. Okay, yes, in Italy, they cut it with scissors. Um, they don't cut it with knives. Uh, here on stainless steel. Now, please, uh, darling, don't burn your mouth. Um, could be, could be uh, hot. Bon appetito. It could be hot. Mmm, that's tasty. Oh, it tastes like from an it real Italian pizzeria, and the topping is so great.